chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again let us understand the basics of euclid geometry this geometry was discovered by euclid in this geometry a dot is called a point this dot has no length and no breadth and this is called a point if many dots they are put together they they create a line even though a dot has no length or breadth but if you keep putting infinite of them together in one line then we get a straight line lines are of various types if a line extends towards this side to infinity and to this side to infinity then it is called a line if it has finite ends that is it starts here and stops here then it is called a segment or line segment and if it has a starting point and it extends to infinity on one side then it is called a ray and if two lines two rays or two line segments are inclined to each other then this measure between them is called angle so with this basic definition of the things in euclid geometry let us begin our study of angle types of angles one angle is called acute angle acute angle between two lines is an angle that is less than 90 degrees an angle of 90 degrees is a right angle in which two lines are perpendicular to each other so we can say acute angle and then you have a right angle if an angle is greater than a right angle this inclination between these two lines is called an obtuse angle obtuse angle so an acute angle is less than 90 a right angle is equal to 90 degrees an obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees a 180 degree angle is the angle that is made by a straight line with itself this is called 180 degrees and such a line is called a straight line and the angle is called straight angle straight angle then the fifth angle we have is called reflex angle a reflex angle is so this i would say is more than 180 degrees and this is less than 1 uh, obtuse angle is more than 90 and less than 180 180 straight angle and an angle between 180 to 360 is called a reflex angle and a reflex angle looks like this 
This is called a reflex angle. And finally, the angle of 360 degrees, that is the complete circle, is called a complete angle. So these are the various types of angles. If I represent them in a diagram on a straight line, then I would say that an angle between 0 and 90 degrees is called an acute angle. An angle of 90 degrees is called a right angle. And between 90 and 180, it is called an obtuse angle. And at 180 degrees, it is called a straight angle. And between 180 and 360 degrees, it is called a reflex angle. And at 360 degrees, it is called a complete angle. So these are the various types of angles that we have in geometry. You should be aware of all these names because in examination, an examiner can test your understanding of these definitions and simply call an angle as complete angle or reflex angle so that you are you should be knowing that a reflex angle for example is between 180 and 360 degrees. After this let us see how are angles measured. Measurement of angles. Measurement of angles. The oldest unit of measurement is called degree. It is represented by a small zero there. For example, an angle of 65 degrees is represented by 65 degrees. This angle starts at 0 degrees and a complete angle moves to 360 degrees. So, a complete circle is of 360 degrees. A degree is further divided into minutes. A degree is subdivided into minutes and 60 minutes. A minute is represented by a small dash. 60 minutes are equal to 1 degree and 60 seconds are equal to 1 minute. So these are further classes of the degree. Questions have been asked in exams for minutes also, for degrees also and maybe in future they come for seconds also. I will solve those examples in about a minute. Let me introduce another unit of measurement which is now currently used that is called the scientific unit. Scientific unit. This unit is used in all scientific measurements. Degree is a common man's unit like we know from day to day life but the more scientific unit is called a radian. In radians, complete angle, complete angle is 2 pi, where pi is the same pi we know for the circle pi r square that we know from there, that is it is 22 by 7. I will not go into all the details of what pi is, but I would say that in radians, complete angle is of 2 pi radians, which implies 2 pi radians are same as 360 degrees or 1 pi is same as 180 degrees. You should remember this relationship. Let us now take a question that was asked in the recent papers and that question is dependent on 
this pi, this minute, this degree. The question is, express 11 degrees 15 minutes in terms of pi. First of all, we will break this into degrees. 11 degrees 15 minutes are same as are same as 11 degrees plus 15 minutes which are same as 11 degrees plus. Now on the rough side I'll say 60 minutes are equal to 1 degree therefore 1 minute is equal to 1 by 60 degrees and 15 minutes will be equal to 1 by 60 into 15 which is equal to 1 by 4 degree. So, we can replace this 15 minutes by 1 by 4th of a degree. Now, I am not writing degree for the remaining calculation because it is understood that everything is in degrees which is equal to 11 plus 1 by 4 which is equal to take 4 as LCM this becomes 44 plus 1 equal to 45 by 4 this is in degrees. Now we have to convert this degrees into pi. We know 180 degrees are same as pi radians as I have just now told you in the previous slide which implies 1 degree is same as pi by 180 which implies 45 by 4 are same as pi by 180 multiplied by 45 by 4 which is same as now this 45 will go by 4 table 45 into 4 is 180 so 4 into 4 is 16 which is equal to pi by 16 radians. So out of those four options pi by 16 is going to be the correct answer. Let us move on to our further discussion of straight lines. We will now discuss prove that vertically opposite angles opposite angles are equal. This is a well known fact but let us see whether we can prove with the help of our knowledge of geometry that is we have to prove that angle 1 is equal to angle 2. I am doing this proof so that you understand how we can think in geometry from very basic terms this question may never be in your exams but the basic fundamentals of solving this question will definitely be of help to you. So to prove this let us write this angle as 3. Now let me call this AB and let me call this as CD. Now here I will write line AB is a straight line is a straight line so angle 1 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees angles on a straight line they are totaling to 180 degrees this is a known fact about a straight line on the sidebars I am writing a definition supplementary angles supplementary angles are those angles are angles whose sum is whose sum is 180 degrees. Therefore we can say that angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary. I have written this definition so that your understanding of angles is very complete. This definition is really important because an examiner usually might say that these angles are supplementary 
So you should be able to understand that when he says that angles are supplementary, then he means that the sum of those angles is 180 degrees. There is a related term called complementary angles. Complementary angles. Complementary angles are those angles whose sum is equal to 90 degrees. So, if two angles have a sum of 90 degrees, then they are called complementary angles. If two angles have a sum of 180 degrees, then they are called supplementary angles. Now, you should remember these two definitions. I have given them definitions here because here was an occasion where I could discuss them. Although, this is not directly related to the current question. So, I have concluded that 1 and 3, they add to 180 degrees. Now, I can write angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees minus angle 1. This is my first equation that I can write here. Now, if we see this picture from a second side, from the perspective of CD, CD is also a straight line. CD is a straight line, is a straight line. So, angle 3 plus angle 2 should also be equal to 180 degrees. Now, I am looking for a relation between angle 1 and angle 2. So, the artifice in mathematics is to remove the unwanted angle from two equations by substitution. Here I have a value of angle 3 as 180 minus angle 1. I will remove this unwanted angle by putting this angle 3 from equation 1 into this one. Putting from equation 1. This process is called elimination. So, what we are saying is, we are eliminating angle 3 by substituting it from equation 1, which implies 180 minus angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees, which implies, now I will take this angle 1 to the other side and 180 also to the other side. I will be left with angle 2 on this side, which is equal to this 180 degrees. This becomes minus 180 degrees and angle 1 becomes plus 1, which implies angle 2 is equal to angle 1, which is proved. So, this is how we prove this fact. Here we discussed proving that vertically opposite angles are equal. This proof is dependent on the fact that the straight line is having a sum of 180 degrees. There is no proof of this. It is a known fact and such facts are called axioms. A-X-I-O-M-S So, axioms are the foundation of theorems and this wherever you prove that is called a theorem. So, any statement that is proved with the help of axioms is called a theorem. Now, let us move to our next discussion. Now, we will discuss the theory about parallel lines. Two lines that do not cut each other are called parallel lines. We say that line L and L dash are parallel. The symbol used is this like we say L is parallel to L dash and if there is a line that cuts two parallel lines, this line is called a transversal. So, a line that cuts two parallel lines is called a transversal. Now, there is a basic known fact about transversals that angle 1 and angle 2 as shown like this, these are called corresponding angles. Angles 1 and angle 2 are defined as 
are defined as corresponding angles. And we have to believe as an axiom a well-known fact that corresponding angles for L parallel to L dash are always equal. This is an obvious fact. This fact is correct other way round also. If corresponding angles are equal, if corresponding angles are equal, then lines are parallel. This is the only basic thing about the parallel lines that one has to know. If you know this, then you can do anything with the parallel lines. Let me push a few definitions of the angles with regard to parallel lines and transversals. So first of all, if these are parallel lines and this is the transversal, then angle 1 and angle 2 are called corresponding angles. This is one situation. Second situation. If these are parallel lines and this is the cutting transversal, then this angle angle 1 and angle 2, they are called interior alternating alternate angles. They are called interior alternate angles and they are also always equal. Always equal. This is an axiomatic fact, assumed fact, but this can be proved. I might not go into the proof of that, but for your understanding, this can be proved on the basis of this. Therefore, as I told you in the previous slide, if you assume the equality of 1 and 2, then you can prove anything for the straight lines. So right now, the interior alternate angles, they are 1 and 2 and they will always be equal. Third situation, if these are two parallel lines and this is a transversal, then this angle and this angle, they are called an alt exterior alternate angles. And they are also always equal. Fourth situation. If these are two parallel lines and this is the transversal, then these two angles, angle 1 and 2, they are called interior angles on same side of transversal. and their sum is always equal to 180 degrees. Angle 1 and angle 2 are therefore supplementary. So these definitions, one you should remember corresponding angles on the same situation, alternate angles on the opposite side, opposite side alternate angles, then interior angles on the same side of transversal. Alternate is a term commonly used you should remember that alternate means something on the opposite sides of the transversal. These four definitions you should be aware. Let me now take up one question on transversal lines so that you understand the basics of parallel lines and the transversal. So here he says, if a transversal intersects two lines such that the bisectors of a pair of corresponding angles are parallel, then prove that the lines are parallel. Let us first of all draw a diagram to represent the situation. In this case, 
this line we can call p this line we can call p dash these are not given to be parallel but it is said that a transversal that is cutting them has a situation where the bisectors of a pair of corresponding angles now this is a corresponding angle this is a corresponding angle let me call this corresponding angle as 1 this hole and this hole is called angle 2 now these are not given equal but what he says is that the bisectors of this angle 1 which implies that angle 3 and this is called angle 4 this is a bisector of this corresponding angle and this dash line is a bisector of this corresponding angle he says that line l is parallel to l dash first of all what is a bisector a bisector divides an angle divides an angle into two equal parts this is the definition of an angle bisector so from this figure we can see that angle 3 is equal to 2 times angle 2 times angle 3 is equal to angle 1 because angle 1 is divided into two parts one of which has been labeled as 3 so angle 2 twice of angle 3 is equal to angle 1 this is one thing that is known to us we are writing what is known to us here also we can see that 2 times angle 4 is same as angle 2 now what he has given us is that given that L is parallel to L dash this is what is given to us this is the bisector of this angle this is the bisector of this angle and L and L dash have been given us parallel so what does it imply this is very interesting that we are reasoning out the things which implies that angle 3 is same as angle 4 reason corresponding angles now if if this is one line this is other line then the transversal is this the same transversal for these two parallel lines also therefore angle 3 and angle 4 are exactly equal and which further implies 2 times angle 3 is equal to 2 times angle 4 i have multiplied both sides by 2 which implies now what is 2 times angle 3 it is angle 1 which is equal to 2 times angle 4 is known to be angle 2 this is all mathematical reasoning which implies now if angle 1 is equal to angle 2 which implies corresponding angles for p and p dash are equal therefore p is parallel to p dash which is proved so the general method of proof was to carefully and clearly write down what is given to us this was given to us this is given to us and then a simple mathematical trick that led us to the conclusion that if bisectors are parallel then the lines are themselves parallel